Welcome inside Jaguar's highly technical special vehicle operations facility, where today we're going to be taking the covers off a car that truly rips up the rule book. A car that's been inspired by Jaguar's rich racing history and a car that's going to be raced by millions of fans in Gran Turismo. It is, of course, the Jaguar Vision GTSV. But before we take a look at that, we need to start at the very beginning. And who better than to talk to us about Jaguar's rich racing history than the team director of Jaguar Racing, James Barkley. James, welcome to you. We're shortly going to be looking at the new car, but let's start at the very beginning. Where did some of the inspiration come from? Well, it's an honor to be with you today, actually, to take you through some of the history of Jaguar's racing uh, and specifically the cars that have really inspired the GTSV. So the first car we're looking at here is the Jaguar C-Type, really one of the cars which was pivotal in writing Jaguar's success in motorsport and on track. The C-Type had a 3.4 litre straight six engine and started to really introduce the, the concept of aerodynamics, as you can see with this beautiful aluminium body. It had a, a tubeless steel chassis, um, so really kind of bringing a lot of rigidity and strength. But what's most important about this car to all of our daily lives today is the first racing car to use disc brake technology. In fact, developed by Sir Sterling Moss and our factory test driver, Norman Dewis, we proved that technology on the racetrack and it's something we all enjoy the benefits of today. So a really iconic car, not only for Jaguar, but for the history of motoring as well. And we then come to the Jaguar D-Type, a really achingly beautiful racing car. And you really start to get the understanding of how we used aerodynamics now in terms of optimizing performance. So making the car uh, fly through the air as easy as possible, reducing the, the friction of the car through the air, improving top speed, really designed to race at places like Le Mans where you needed really high top speed, um, but achieving a beautiful design at the same time, really just a stunning car. We made this in a long nose and a short nose variant. Um, and like the C-Type, incredibly successful. This car won Le Mans in 1955, 1956, and in 1957 came first, second, third, fourth, and sixth. So an incredibly successful car. But one of the real trademarks of the D-Type is this beautiful uh, tail fin you can see here. Really introduced for the high speed straights at Le Mans where you had very fast corners. It helped make, create more stability, especially in your at high speed. And, as a result, also created a beautiful piece of design on the car as well. But yeah, if you had to have one in the collection, this has got to be right up there. <laughs> Definitely, yes. Then we come to the Jaguar XJR9, a real powerhouse, a brute of a, a, a sports racing car. This was the Group C days, Group C regulations, uh, and really iconic period of racing history with fantastic manufacturers going head to head, racing around the world, and the particular, the main event being at Le Mans in the most, one of the most iconic liveries of all time, the Jaguar Silk Cut livery, just beautiful. It's gotta be up there as one of the most iconic liveries. This is the 1988 Le Mans winning car, um, powered by a V12 engine, 700 horsepower. But in its low configuration, it's Le Mans low, low, low downforce configuration to reduce basically drag and again, optimize top speed. So you see this really low wing and it's something you'll see in terms of inspiration for the GTSV shortly. The rear wheels covered again to reduce drag, make it as quick as it can be through the air. Amazingly, this car did 240 miles an hour every lap for 24 hours. So an incredible piece of engineering, um, but also at the same time, just done in a, in a beautiful way from a design point of view, both in its physical appearance, but also actually in the, in the, the livery as well. And from that, we move to the present day because now we're racing electric cars. Absolutely, and this is a car I'm very proud of as a team. It's our fifth all new Formula E car. It's the Jaguar I-Type 5. Over a thousand new components developed for our new season in Formula E. Formula E for us is a real world test bed for electric vehicle technology. We are pushing electric vehicle technology to the absolute limits, racing fantastic teams and manufacturers with you know, 24 fully professional drivers. It's about optimizing this technology to, to be successful in that environment. And it's been a, an incredible program to take our experience and our knowledge as a racing team and take that and apply it to the GTSV. We've taken four of the, power, the powertrains from this car and applied it to the GTSV. It's quite incredible for us to take our capability and apply it in this, uh, this way for the game. James, thank you very much. Well, there you have it. That is the DNA, the backstory, if you like, to the GTSV. I now think it is time we take the covers off and we take a look. Wow, that really is incredible. Who better to entrust 
with taking the Vision GT Coupe that's already racing in the game and just take it to that next level than the Special Vehicle Operations team. And I'm delighted to say that joining me now, I've got Jamal Hamidi, the Engineering Director for SVO, and Oli Cattell Ford. You have been responsible for designing the exterior of this car. Jamal, just starting with you, my goodness, this car is huge. It's, it is, it's absolutely epic. And as wonderful as it looks, the, the technical specs on this car are really just mind blowing. It's got a huge, massive lithium ion battery. It's got four motors, one on each wheel, almost 2000 PS, 3500 kilowatt or Newton meters of torque zero to 60 and 1.65 seconds. 1.65 seconds, how could you possibly know that? Well, one of the really cool things is that we have used the same tools that we use in our production cars to develop this car in the virtual world. So whether it's our CFD analysis for aerodynamics or lap time and acceleration projections, uh, we, we can uh, project the performance envelope of this car fairly accurately. And it must be fantastic for guys like you as well to be involved in a project like this where there are just simply no rules. There's no budgets, there's no racing regulations. It's, it's a dream and you know, you're really only limited by the creativity inside your brain. And talking of creativity, Ollie, wow. I mean, you have designed an absolute stunning car here. I mean, where did you start with a project like this? Yeah, thank you, Amanda. Obviously, there's a, it's a massive team effort to create something like this. And the, the starting point for this car was, um, was the Gran Turismo Vision Coupe that we released last, last Christmas sort of time. Um, and, and we just, the first thing we did when that car came out was just play it for hours and hours, probably way too long, actually, um, and, and really get a feel for how the, how the car turned out in the game. Um, and, and from that, we, we then, the car came out it was launched and we saw this amazing content created by the gamers. So we had these YouTube videos reviewing this, uh, our last car. And, and we took all of this, all these learnings, all this feedback, and we wanted to create something even better. Um, and so this is it, this is our, our endurance race car. And um, so the, the key to, to making this happen, uh, to create this amazing aerodynamics package, was really to get the SV guys on board. Um, and do what they do best uh, and make this work in the real world as well as the virtual world. Now, I mean, it's a stunning piece of work, but we can't talk about what the car looks like without mentioning this absolutely enormous rear wing. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's, that's the first thing you notice from the last car is this big rear wing. And we, we really, we, we love this design theme that my colleague Julio created. And it's the idea that you have the sculpture from the body side of the car runs through to the aerodynamics package. And uh, so we, we took that and we worked with the SV team to actually get these, these real world aerodynamic sections and make it really work. It looks absolutely incredible. And the livery as well is, is beautiful. It's a sort of circuit board, is it? Yeah, so obviously we're so inspired by our, our Formula E and electric racing series. Um, and so we really want to celebrate that with this sort of electric circuit board livery. And at the same time, it has these links to our heritage. So we have the, um, the dates dotted around the car. They're actually the, the dates that our, our heritage race cars came out. Oh, OK. So, and so you, that carries on all the way through the car, I guess, to the front as well? Yeah, and throughout the car, we, we've linked our heritage into it. So uh, the, the front fenders, for instance, they really reference the shapes that we had on our C-Type Jaguar. Well, it is absolutely incredible. Congratulations to both of you. But now the question that's on everybody's lips is what is it like to actually race an electric car? Well, I'm delighted to say that I have the man here to tell me, Sam Bird. Sam, welcome. Now, you have just recently joined Jaguar Racing, and this is going to be your car this year. You've been involved with Formula E since the very beginning. What's it like to race an electric car? Hi, Amanda. F firstly, I'd like to take the time to congratulate the, the guys here because they've created an absolute beast. Um, it looks absolutely incredible, guys. Well done. Um, to drive a Formula E car is challenging, exciting, fast. Um, handling 250 kilowatts underneath my right foot certainly takes a lot of skill, especially on the fact that we're only racing on city circuits. 
250 kilowatts, you've got one motor, you've got four motors <laughs> at that. Yeah, one on each axle. That's going to be a serious challenge for everybody playing on Gran Turismo. This car is going to be an absolute beast in a straight line. And uh, I can't wait to, to see what it's like in the game. But you're not unused to trialling new things, new technologies in your race car, are you? What's quite exciting, actually, Amanda, is that there's technology already coming from the iType 5 and going into the, uh, into the virtual world in, in the game. Um, there's a fibre called Type Fibre that we've used in my race seat for this season that is actually used in this car as well, which is really, really exciting. The fact that Jaguar is using you know, real life and, and going to futuristic projects. Now, we've just heard about how this car, they can simulate just how fast this is going to be. You're very used to using simulators in the world of racing. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that drivers were actually using Gran Turismo to learn circuits that they would soon be racing at. I was one of those drivers, Amanda. I used to use Gran Turismo back in the day on my PlayStation to, 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 to learn the circuits. Nowadays, uh, along with Jaguar Racing, I use their state-of-the-art simulator to learn the circuits and to help improve our race car to make it go faster. But the technology now is so good on these games and the graphics is so good that it is really, really close now to what we use as our state-of-the-art simulator. So the gaming world has really come on leaps and bounds in the last decade. And a final word on the Vision GT SV? Final word on this car, I mean, I wish I had the keys. If I had the keys to it, I'd go out and I'd drive it to the absolute maximum. But I guess I'm going to have to, uh, to just wait and drive it on Gran Turismo. <laughs> well, I also cannot wait to get my hands on it and have a go as well. And the GTSV is going to be coming to Gran Turismo in 2021.